Manor Lords is one of the most anticipated games releasing this year, and it just came into early access. And the most shocking thing a lot of us have realized is this game is hard. <laughs> the tutorial is bare bones, and if you're not prepared, the enemies can quickly overtake you, take all your land, and burn down your village. So I wanted to make a beginner's guide to help you have the best start possible, give you some good tips for your first year, get everything going, have all your resources under control, and avoid some of the mistakes I made along the way, and just get over some of the confusion that you might have at the start. So let's get straight into these tips, and the first thing I would do on a, in a new game is build a second hitching post and get another ox. So the ox is vital for everything you do in your first year, mainly because it transports the logs. So as you're chopping down trees for timber, the ox can bring those from where they fell over to the to the storage. It can then take them to the buildings that need upgraded. So if you only have one ox and you're trying to expand and grow and make this big village, you're constantly waiting on your ox and your villagers can't do anything until the logs are at the, the buildings that need building. So yeah, the first thing I would do is a new hitching post and a second ox and everything will move so much faster. You can also upgrade your hitching post later to have two oxes at each one, but it's cheaper at the start just to buy another one. Next one is, is really simple and if you've played the game for a little bit, you already know this, but set up your storage and your granary. The items is when you start the game, all your items just on the ground. And if you don't move them somewhere, they'll get damaged when it rains. So set up a granary and a storage building and assign a worker to each and they'll move out. They'll grab the stuff and they'll put it away. OK, what I would do from here is I would I would kind of pause the game and decide what you want your town to look like, what you want your village to look like, because placement of everything is pretty important. So what I would suggest is some big tips for building houses. When you want to upgrade from tier one to tier two and tier three, you need to fulfill certain criteria. And you can see that criteria when you click on the house. The main ones are different resources, such as firewood, clothing, and food variety. All the houses want this different stuff. So what you want to make sure is your house is near a market. So pretty much any gathering you do in the game, the gatherer will go and open up a market stall to share it with your other villagers. So the firewood person will open a firewood stall and give it out to villagers that can then heat their home. Um, the food will go to the market and people will be able to get food from there. So it's really important to have your houses kind of circle a market. And if you find yourself building houses far away from a market, you want to place a second market. The next important thing with houses is to look at the housing extensions. So when you make a house, you can make them bigger than they need to be. You can kind of change up how the houses are built. So as you as you set out a plot for houses, you can change the divisions in a house by clicking the one button or you can change the rotation of the house by clicking another button. So you can decide how much room these houses take. And it might seem efficient to make them really small to fit more in, but you're, th there's good benefits to making them bigger. So if you make a house too big, you can fit two families in one house when you upgrade it. If you make them really long, you can build an extension on the back and build things in it, which is really, really important. And I would suggest pretty much every house have a house extension. So yeah, as you build your house and you see this little, uh, this little dotted connection at the back that says extension, I would try and make as many of these as you can in your first few houses, because the main things you can do here is you can click on the house once it's built, you can click this little button on the right, and you can set something up in the garden. Now, the big things here is you can set up a chicken coop to get a passive amount of eggs, and you can set up a vegetable patch to get a passive amount of vegetables. Once you get uh, into the talent tree and you buy the orchard, you can also set up orchards in here. Once you upgrade a house to level two, you can also make these artisan buildings where they just like, it kind of turns them into a shop. They can craft bows, shields, armor, weapons. They can bake goods. It's really important. These, these are really important buildings later on. But in the start, they're just used as really good sources of, of passive food and a different variety of food that makes your villagers happy. Okay, the next thing you want to work on is setting up a zone for wood. So as you're progressing in the early game, everything you need needs timber. Everything you build pretty much needs timber. So make sure to build a logging camp right at the start and have somebody employed there almost permanently. I don't think I ever took anyone out of the logging camp early on. If you have a couple of oxes, it's not a bad idea to sign an ox permanently to the logging camp too. So they'll just permanently be here bringing the logs and transporting the logs around. And your, your woodcutters will destroy everything around them in a big circle. So once you've done that, I would build a woodcutter's lodge somewhere nearby to cut other trees for firewood. So with these two buildings, they'll sort of destroy all the trees around them in a big circle. And in the early game, timber will get you quite far. But then you're going to start needing planks when you want to upgrade your hitching post to stables to have two livestock at each one. When you want to upgrade your houses to tier two, which happens quite early on, you're going to need planks. So what I would do is I would place a saw pit here so that you can craft planks. And I wouldn't keep this staffed all the time because you're going to need most of the timber. But when you start to need planks, you can just go put someone in there. They'll take a log, put it in the saw pit, make planks, and then you can take them out. So I would I would get that set up in a little circle. So you've kind of got this 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 wood gathering area. Next on to food. First big tip for food is the game kind of tells you, oh, farming, farming. 
And farming looks very interesting. I would completely avoid farming in your first year. Farming is way too complex for your first year, in my opinion. Farms take a long time to grow, even longer if you don't have an ox working the field. You'll need to put most of your workers on the farm for huge periods of time to plow, seed and harvest. And then when all of the crops come off of the farm, you then need to do extra work to turn them into actual usable items. So I'd recommend looking around your map for berry bushes and wild animals in your first year. If you have berry bushes, they regrow every year, so you can build a forager's hut near them, fill it full of workers, they'll extract every single berry from the bushes, take them all to your granary, and then unstaff the building. And then wait till next year, all the berry bushes will be grown back, which is, which is perfect. In your first year, those berries will easily keep you going for most of the year. Next thing to look for is wild animals. If you see any wild animals in your zone, place a hunting spot just outside of them, and then send workers there. The hunting camp is similar to the berries, but they don't vanish. You kind of want to reduce the population to a point where you're happy. I think it automatically sets it to 10. So you reduce the animals to 10 and then you harvest all the meat and all the, all the hides. And then you can just take your workers out for a while while that population starts to grow back. It's not as seasonal as the, as the berries and it's more that you can have this going on and off often so you can constantly be topping up your supplies. And then the next thing is look at your housing extensions. I would get a couple of farms in your back gardens and a couple of chicken coops. Workers that live, uh, families that live in these houses will automatically manage whatever is in their housing extension on top of their normal job. And will even send them to the stores for your other villagers to eat. Even if you only have a couple of houses making a couple of eggs or a couple of vegetables, they don't give you a huge amount, but it's passive all year round. And it will increase the food variety, which increases your influence and makes your villagers happy. But yeah, farming itself is just overly confusing and overly time consuming, especially when you've got so much other stuff to worry about. There's loads of different things you can farm, which are really useful. And I would definitely recommend, especially in, in the mid game. But yeah, I've done quite a lot of farming on my, on my main playthrough now. And if you want a full detailed guide on the seasons, fertility, different crop types, then what to do with them, let me know down below in the comments and I'll, I'll make a full guide on it because it is really interesting. But again, just a little too much for you your first year and i would say not worth it unless you can scale it really high like huge farms okay next up let's talk about wealth lots of things in this game require wealth such as housing extensions buying more animals and other big upgrades and the game doesn't just give you passive gold like other building games or drop a gold mine next to your village so here are some good ways to get wealth early on the first one and probably the easiest is bandit camps as soon as you build enough houses for your small village, the game will give you 20 spears and 20 shields and you'll get a pop up. And in the top right, there'll be a little in the top right where, where your armor and stuff is. You'll see 40, which means you've, you've received that. What you can do here is you can click the little sword icon at the bottom and create a unit of spearmen. If you then click rally on these spearmen, they'll take those 20 shields, they'll take those spears and they'll take 20 people from the village to rally up and fight. Now, if you also have like armor and stuff, they will also equip that. But in the early game, we don't need that. Now, you don't need 20 people either. If you've only got about 10, 15, you'll be fine. What you want to do now is look around the map and you'll have got notifications that bandits have maybe been sub sighted or bandits have set up nearby. And look, so look for a bandit camp around and you might not have one straight away, but just wait until you see a bandit camp get discovered. They're usually protected by like 15 bandits. So take your, take your spearmen that you've got now and march over to these bandit camps. Now, these are a lot easier than, than they seem. I think I took 14 or 15 spearmen. I lost one and beat them all and with no tactics. So it's not too difficult and you can do it really early on. Defeat the bandits and then move over to their to their bandit camp. Click the bandit camp and you will receive a reward. Now, what you get the choice of here is take it for yourself or give it to the nearby village. You want to give it to the nearby village and that will add wealth to your currency in that village. And it's not small either. It's it's a couple of hundred or like 150 or so wealth. I think I got 150 or 200 from my first one. And that's a good chunk. That's enough to buy a couple of livestock, upgrade a few buildings, do a few house extensions. It's a really good lump sum of money to get you started. So I definitely get going with this early on. Now, the second way to make wealth is more sustainable and that's through trade. This takes a bit more work to set up than just fighting bandits, but it's, it's good to get going, especially once you get over that initial barrier of needing a bit of wealth to build a few buildings. So if you build the trading building, you can choose what items to import and what items to export. And then your assigned worker at this building will automatically trade this based on the levels that you set. So in the early game, I had lots of iron and I needed, I needed wealth. So I set a surplus of iron that I was willing to go down to and then traded the rest away for a while. Now, as I mined the iron, they would keep filling the wagons and sending it off to sell. Similarly with importing items, you can set an amount that you want and they will keep topping you up to that amount. So say you have no clay near you and you want to import some clay for building upgrades. 
you could set to import at 20 and every time you run low on clay, you would import it back up to that level of 20. So this is a really good way to fill any items that you're missing. Maybe there's, there's nodes in your, in your territory that you don't have, or maybe there's things you have that you, you have too much of or you don't know how to use early on and you could use the wealth better. The only other thing here is some are some require trade routes setting up because they're kind of a different kind of trade. So what you need to do here is you need to click the button on the right and set up a trade route. And that means that every time somebody comes through the village to trade, you will trade with them. You can also take a talent point in the in the tree that caps the trade route price. So it, it lowers it to I think 25. So it will never go over 25, which is good if you plan on doing loads and loads of trading. I personally haven't really got into huge trades yet. So I haven't felt the need to use that talent, but it's there if you want it. Um, the only other thing is you can go in the livestock and instead of getting an ox at your at your hitching post, you can get a horse. If you assign a horse to the trade building, it will transport things faster. Again, not super needed, especially early on, but good to know. But yeah, I think that's all of the big things I can think of in, in your first year, getting set up early on, getting a few oxes, getting everything stored away, having a decent housing setup that is sustainable and that will allow you to upgrade it in the future to tier two, tier three making use of extensions and then getting on top of food and wealth. It's a really good start to the game, in my opinion. Once you've got all that, you can easily make your way through the winter and then get into artisan goods, tier two and tier three buildings, making these huge farms and building your manor. But hopefully this is enough for all of the basics. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and I'll, I'll try my best to answer them. And if you want any more detailed guides on any systems in the game, let me know. I made a huge mistakes on my first playthrough and probably my second playthrough. I built these massive farms in the first year. My village was all over the place and nothing was optimized and nothing went well. And I got absolutely destroyed by bandits pretty much in like the second or third year. So yeah, hopefully this helps, but let me know in the comments if you have any questions. That's it from me. Take care and I'll catch you in the next one.